Tom Clark's Main Event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Boink Studios. And check us out on boinkstudios.com where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's Show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's Main Event. We're back once again here on Facebook Live. Glad you are with us. We're also recording today. The show will post on YouTube and is always available on boinkstudios.com. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. This is episode number 113, and yes, we're moving right along here on Facebook. We want to thank everyone for joining us here, of course, and for coming back each and every week. Much thanks to Heidi Ryan and the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for giving us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. So episode 112 was the Survivor Series Fallout. It was a huge event and a really huge weekend for WWE. We talked about the match results as well as NXT TakeOver War Games. Last week was a fun show. I thought it was pretty cool. Yes. So we are back uh, here with episode number 113. And uh, let's do a quick uh, series of shout outs. Um, I've not done this in a few episodes or so. Give me your name. And if you've already done that, you don't have to do it again. Give me your name and where you are in the world. Lisa. What's up? Lisa in Arkansas. Richard. Hello in Mississippi. Andrew is in Utah. Go Jazz. Right, Andrew? Um, I was a, I can't say I was ever a jazz fan, but I remember when they were uh, in their heyday with Stockton and Malone. Those were good times. Hello, Alma. What is up? Good to talk to you. Claire. Hey, first time watching Claire in Manchester. Claire, what is up? Welcome to the show. All right. Everyone say hey to Claire. Welcome, Claire. Ray is in New York. What's up, Ray? Ray Ray is in New York. Hello in Toronto, Canada. David in Memphis. Home of the King. I'm talking about Jerry Lawler. Okay. Hello in Wales to Lee. What's up, my friend? Memphis, Tennessee. D Ruff. Dude, I'm digging the name. I'm not going to play. Nice. Uh, hello in California, Miss Lopez. How are you, my dear? Welcome back to the show. Brad in Minnesota. Lake Minnetonka. Right? It's my Prince reference. I'm a giant Prince fan, dude. I'm not even playing. Cincinnati Jack. Is that a name? It, that, that's awesome. Uh, hello from Cold Ass. <laughs> Jim, welcome back to the show, brother. Dan in Boston, what's up? Alma, uh, let's see, Wichita, can't, yeah, there you go. Um, Ohio, Kathy and Gaffney. Kathy, uh, Tom in North Carolina here, my friend. Conover to be specific. Claire, if we're not friends, please send me a friend request on Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger and I will... Or send me a hello, and I'll send you a friend request. Sound good? Miranda in Colorado. With Miranda, what's up? Welcome back. Pensacola, Florida is Jessica. What's up, Andrew? Go Grizzlies. Oh, I got you, hockey team. Shane, Ohio. We got some Ohio folks in the house today. Another Minnesota. Home of the Minnesota Raking Crew. Oh, preach it. Are we talking about Ole and Gene? Are we talking about Ole and Arn? Huh? Either way, I'm digging the crap out of that. Steve in Scotland. Scotland, Steve. Everyone say hello to Steve. In Scotland. Welcome to the show, my friend. Ryan in Pennsylvania, what's up? All right, nice. I love this, man. You can tell I'm like, you know, sheltered. I don't get around much. It amazes me when I talk to people from different states and countries. It's kind of pretty sad. Marcel in Germany. Marcel Young, yes. Welcome, Marcel, to the show, my friend. Awesome to have you. Good mythical morning from Benton, Missouri. David, what's up, buddy? Mikey from El Paso. Love it. Mike in Indiana. I'm going to tell my 10-year-old about this later. You guys know my sidekick, right? My kid. He loves this kind of stuff. He's like, Where, you talk to someone in Scotland? Shut up. And I'm like, yeah, for real, dude. It's all. Again, can you tell I'm sheltered? It's kind of pathetic. I don't get out anywhere. Isn't that sad? I'm too busy writing. That That's my excuse. I'm sticking with that. Sean in Wales. Welcome, my friend. Jolie, please stick around. Popped in to say hi. Stick around for the show. Uh, Dean Ambrose is from Cincinnati. Well done. 
Uh, let's see. Zach Saber and ROH. Boy, I'm with you there, Corey. Alex, relax, man. I didn't see you there. Where are you from, Alex? Hit me again, brother. My apologies. Hello, Mandy in Tennessee. What's up, Mandy? Mike, first time turning in, tuning in. Mike, my friend, welcome to the show. This is Tom Clark's main event. I've been rolling since 2014. Uh, you can find me a bunch of different places. Stay tuned. I'll hit you with that at the end. Thanks for watching, man. Uh, let's see. Jenny Hall, best friends with the one and only Rex Chapel's wife. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Alan in Arkansas. We got a few Arkansas. Uh, let's see. I'm not awake. It's Belton. Belton. Yeah, I got you. David, my apologies for screwing up the name. It's not on you. It's on me. I shouldn't know what you're talking about. My apologies. Uh, let's see. What else we got going on? Who else, man? Anyone else want to hit us with where you are in the world? You only have to do it the one time. You don't have to keep doing it. I'm not going to demand, do, to demand that you do it again. Okay. Who was it that said I skipped over him? What was your name? Michael, my apologies, man. I got a bunch of people I'm talking to right now. Hit me with where you are again. I'll give you a shout out, man. Joshua, what's up, brother? Clar Vincent. Vincent, there you go. First time from Ohio. Another Ohio man in the house. Welcome to the show, man. Missy Wilder, welcome to the show. Thanks for hanging out. First time tuning in, Otis, best name ever. Otis, thanks for watching, brother. Going great, my friend. Thank you for watching. Stick around. Joshua in Louisiana. Larry in Charlotte. Tom Conover, what's up, brother? <laughs> John calls me Dean Lookalike. Here we go with that stuff again. Uh, let's see. Travis in Kentucky. What's up, my friend? Antoine in Washington, D.C. Corey's in Illinois. Jolie's in Delaware. Charles in Wisconsin. First time to... Man, we got some first-timers up in the house today, man. I'm excited about that. Thanks for watching, man. Thanks for listening. Please stay tuned. Stay for the whole show, man. I appreciate it. Andrew, Brooklyn in the house. I just want to say the word Brooklyn makes me feel cool. No sleep till you get there, right? There you go. Uh, South Dakota, Casey, what's up? Keith's back. Welcome back, Keith. Keith, you are in... Keith, are you in Scotland? United Kingdom? Am I wrong? Kevin in South Carolina, what's up, buddy? Mark in Appleton, Wisconsin. Welcome to the show, Mark. Dennis, Staten Island. Staten Island represent, yo. I don't know why I talk like that. Sometimes it just seems like the thing to do. Funny, right? Welcome, Dennis. Seneca in Washington State. Jessica, first time watch. Jessica, aren't you awesome? Welcome to the show. If any of you first-timers, listen. If any of you first-timers are not friends with me on Facebook... Hit me on Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger. Don't try finding me. You're going to have, have a heck of a time doing it. And say, Tom, what's up? It's me from the show. And after the show, I'll send you a friend request. Everyone that I've done that for can attest to the fact that I do it. Uh, let's see. Bradford in the UK. Oh, Keith, my apologies. My apologies, man. Welcome back to the show. I know you watch regularly, brother, so I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> you can't be Dean. You smile more than he does. Plus, my personality is not goofy silly all the time either. We'll get into that. Okay? Robbie from Texas, Von Eric Territory. Nice. Von Eric Territory. Sweet. I like the Von Erics. Gary and Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg, Gary in the house. Uh, Nene Prado. Yes. Houston, Texas. Welcome to the show. Kevin Cockrell, first time list. Kevin, what's up, brother? Nice to see you, man. Chris Hall, Tennessee. Big orange country. Mary from Torquay. Nice. Nene, uh, welcome to the show. Nice. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bo's on his lunch break. Bo's only got a limited amount of time in Buffalo, New York. We can't be screwing around. We got to get to the show. Yeah, we got to talk about Raw. Jim said, don't make me talk about Raw. I don't care, Jim. You're handcuffed, brother. You're in. You're one of us. You have to do it. Let's go ahead and hit the show. If you want to keep giving me where you are in the world, perfectly fine. I'll give you some shout outs. This time, the main event is Raw versus SmackDown and WWE headlines. Here's a headline for you. The November 26th edition of Monday Night Raw sucked. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. There's no easy way to say it. Raw um, was less than stellar. Uh, and, and, and this is not a, a direct uh, um, um, statement on the talent. I think the talent, I believe, always gives maximum effort. When you get it to that level, you kind of have to, or you're not going to have your job very long, we would hope, right? So that's not a slam on the talent. William and Chipley, Florida, welcome. Mike's watching while delivering pizzas. Mike, you're the man. Don't wreck your car. Uh, and I'm I'm watching my weight, but I'll take a pepperoni sausage. It's good stuff. Uh, that's too that's too funny. Yeah, SmackDown's the A show. Hey, Ahmad, how are you, my friend? 
<laughs> one of us. That's funny. Uh, I could probably answer any wrestling trivia question within the last 20 years. My first time watching. would love to have a trivia contest with you sometime. Joshua, I'm up for that, brother. Sounds good, man. Miss Lopez says it's the writers. So, yeah. So, we've got some people talking about uh, um, Deanna in Dallas, Texas. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. Awesome. Because Roman and Braun aren't there. That that begs an interesting question, Vincent. Does Raw suck right now because the top names are out? Yes. Or does it suck because creative are sitting around going, what do you guys want to do? I don't know. I mean, is that what's happening? Because that kind of feels like that's what's happening. I hope it's not. You would think that with like 30 or 40 or 240 people in that room, whatever it is, guys that wrote for sitcoms and other TV shows, I'm, I'm starting to rant. God help us all. Uh, you think those people with uh, legitimate TV jobs could come up with a pro wrestling storyline. <gasps> Shocker, they can't. Isn't that funny? And guess who's running the show? Vince McMahon, still running the show. Is authority storyline ever ending? The answer, Jeff, is no. Never. It started with the McMahon-Helmsley era and actually with Mr. McMahon. It's never going to end ever because that company believes that a heel in charge is the way to go. Hey, hey, Bob's your uncle. That's ridiculous. It's nonsense. I think we all agree on that. You don't need it every time. Uh, The problem is, and I published this piece actually today on Wrestling Rumors, uh, the heel and babyface dilemma of Monday Night Raw. Go read it, please, because I think it's spot on, in my opinion. It's my view. It's whatever. Uh, whatever you think. But, uh, uh, yeah, Patty, hey, just send me a message in Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger, and I will hit you after the show. Okay? Promise. So, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, the, the whole heel babyface dilemma. Anyone out there who says to me, listen, Tom, heels and babyfaces don't matter anymore. The business has evolved beyond that. It's moved past it. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. You're misled. You're confused. Uh, you're incorrect. Sorry, but you're wrong. The company still pushes it because they're supposed to. However, in their haste to make you believe it doesn't matter anymore, they've screwed everything up. I said this last week, and I hold to it. They're the ones responsible for this. You can respond however you want to in the crowd. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't be able to control the narrative of the company. They're allowing you to do it. I'm just saying, for better or worse, they're allowing you to do it. They've, they've lost control. They're giving it to you. Or at least they're giving you the illusion of it. It's kind of screwed up. But anyway, read the piece, if you will. We can talk about it. The Ambrose Rollins feud isn't living up to the hype, and and the Finn Balor Baron Corbin robbery is old. Brother, you said a mouthful, and then some. Uh, look at Nia, look at Becky. Okay, so um, the uh, uh, Dean Ambrose is uh, flat. Dean Ambrose is flatter than that pizza that Mike is delivering. Mike, yes. Um, it's absolutely nonsense. Uh, um, uh, he went from having all this momentum, massive heel turn, most despicable dude that walked the planet since Thanos. Uh, and then all of a sudden with the snap of a finger, he's dead in the water. He turned to dust. It's over. Okay. Even crying to Tony Stark didn't help him. He's dead. Okay. Uh, is it his fault? No, it's WWE. They, they screwed him. Uh, he's getting shots because it, what, what he's in a doctor's office. Were we watching Raw or were we watching Chicago Hope? Were we watching ER? Was it um, Grey's Anatomy? Is that what we were watching Monday? <gasps> uh, it was garbage. It was absolute nonsense. Um, does it mean you can't save it? I never said that. But I, for me, Dean lost his edge. It's another column on Wrestling Rumors. Please check it out. Dean Ambrose loses his edge and the silliness returns in WWE. I think that's what it is. I wrote it. I'm just saying. Uh, Dean lost his edge, yo. Uh, it's over. Okay? Doesn't mean he can't come back. I don't know how he comes back because now no one cares. He was the most despicable villain on that show, and now no one gives a crap because they ruined it. Because WWE has the ball. They're right here. They're getting ready to shoot the winning, and guess what? Brick. Because and Or they just flat out dropped it. Whatever sports reference you want to use, that's what I'm talking about. WWE sucks because they feel build a few superstars. When said superstars get injured, WWE hits the panic button. Man, Andrew, what a great observation. Is that what's happening? Are they like, we got to hit reset. Braun's hurt. Oh, crap, what do we do? Maybe that. Maybe that's true. They're not prepared. Here's what's funny. Whole locker room. I feel like I'm going 1,000 miles an hour. Am I? Okay. Uh, whole locker room at NXT. Most talented guys on the planet and women. You, They can't show up for one Monday Night Raw. I'm not saying, oh, my God, Ricochet's coming to the main roster. No, no. How about for one night only tonight, Ricochet on Monday Night Raw? I mean, I just, I'm just i just asking. You know Roman's hurt. You know Braun's out. You know your show kind of sucks right now. The whole freaking world's telling you. 
can't you can just one night bring up two to four guys from NXT just for once? Because you know the crowd knows who they are now. This is not like it was before they show up and the crowd's going, who's that guy? It's not happening. They know who they are. Just for a week or two. It's something. Spike the ratings. Get people talking. Here's an idea. Make it fun to watch again. It's just an idea. I don't know. Wrestling is built on babyface and heel. Agree 100%. Thank you, Robbie, for having my back, bro. Need a balance of heels and babyface. They do need a balance. Uh, need new writers. Deanna just said a mouthful. <laughs> Jessica said it was so messed up they made Dean uh, do that after Roman announced his leukemia about him. Well, uh, Jessica, I was the guy saying, this is brilliant. Uh, had I known what they were going to do with it, I would have said, wow, don't do it. Look how they dropped the ball. They could have been great. It's not great anymore. Terrible. Um, how do they not know what to do with all the talent they have? Jim just said all the talent that they have. Didn't I say last week, I think I said last week, that WWE is collecting superstars? Like you would collect action figures back in the day. Comic books. I got a whole closet of them. I mean, they're collecting wrestlers. So other companies can't have them. Is that how you do business? Is that how you entertain? Is that how you entertain the masses? Is that how you build a wrestling company? By collecting talent so other companies can't have them. Does that make any sense? I'm asking. Dude, I could be dead wrong. I'm not that guy that says, you either listen to me or you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about because I'm the know-all be all, end all. I'm not saying that because I'm not. I'm one guy with one opinion. I'm asking you. Does WWE's collection, collecting of talent, is that a good idea? Do they sign them because they're available? Are they signing them for the right reasons? That's up to you to decide. I can tell you what I think. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there to you. Finn Balor needs a push. Omni. Uh, is, is Omni your name? I love that. The Omni in Atlanta. I'm just saying. Uh, Finn needs a whole lot, uh, that's for sure, because he's he's amazing, uh, and he needs whatever they they will give him. Jeff says my view on Brock is champ. I can't view Brock because I can't see him. Brock should have John Cena's gimmick, baby. And you know what? As I bang on the laptop because I had to do a dramatic hey hey right here. Um, it's, okay, so uh, as I said several weeks ago. If you hate on Brock, you're hating on the wrong person. you got to hate on the company. It's not Brock's deal. You think Brock showed up and said, Hey, I'll take that stupid-looking title, but I'm not going to be here ever. Now, I'm sure that when it comes to negotiation, it was, I don't want to work that many dates. Let's Can we come to an agreement? But do you really think he's holding that company hostage? you think they can't live without him? Of course they can. Of course they can. They've done it before. They can do it now. They choose not to. Don't get, wrong, don't get mad at the wrong person. Um... I think they need a champ who's going to be there. I don't know. I, that's me talking. But they won't give it to Braun. Uh, Vincent says, I want Big Cass back. Whew, I don't know. That's a tough one, man. Uh, Chris says, have Finn get a match with Brock and have Finn bring back the demon. I, I like the demon, but I don't know long term. What are we talking about? Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I think the demon is great in short bursts. But I think if you give that to him all the time, like Sting was Sting. Sting was not Steve Borden. Sting was Sting. You see what I'm saying? We're Sting Steve Borden with an occasional Sting character that might be different, but he was always Sting. Finn is Finn is Finn is Finn. He's not always the demon. I don't know if WWE knows how to handle that, to be honest with you. Have they proven they know how to handle anything at this point? My dog's barking. Can you hear that? I've got dogs in this neighborhood, man. They just bark incessantly, like all the time. Uh, He's still barking. Crazy. That's why he's not up here, and that's why the door's shut. Uh, so I think the push they're going to do with the $10 bill going to bring back here Balor Club when they sign the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Um, I, I don't know for sure that Kenny and the Bucks are going to show up. I mean, there's all the, the all elite wrestling that's going to be happening at the first of next year. Supposedly it's Cody and the Bucks' baby, the brainchild. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Uh, if Kenny was smart, he'd stay out of WWE. Kenny's probably making a pretty comfortable living as IWGP champion. I don't think he needs to go to WWE ever. I'm sure he wants to, just to say that he did it, but it would have to be on his terms. And how often has that ever happened? Be honest. You got to work within the system. It's like Cool Hand Luke. You got to work within the system. You know what I mean? You got to fit in. You got to go along with the man. Vince, if you don't go along with the man, you're not going to be there very long. And if you are, you're going to be miserable. And we're all going to be miserable watching you struggle. Just saying. Alma says, I love to be a manager. I manage uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Ricochet, Drew McIntyre would have invasion angle. Um, here's and uh, hey, I'm not hating on your idea, Alma, but here's my position on an invasion angle from your NXT. At the end of the day, who wins the matches? 
WWE's main roster. Because you are essentially saying, as a company, by putting over the NXT guys over WWE's main roster, that the NXT guys are better than, than WWE's main roster. And that, that begs the question, if they're better, how come they're not on the main roster? See what I'm saying? That, that, I mean, that, if you need proof of that, look at, the, um, look at the Nexus. If they're so good, how come they didn't win every match? You see what I'm saying? Because the point was made, they're not better than the main roster. John Cena's better than everybody. I think they would shoot holes into that plan. That's my thing. When will EC3 be called up? EC3 was ready the day he got to that company. I don't know what they're waiting on. Uh, I th- if Again, I've said this before. I said it last week, actually, I believe. If it's a choice between wait till the right moment to have the right spot, to have the perfect opportunity, or shove him in right now, wait. Just wait. We don't need to force it. Look at the mess that Raw is. EC3 can't save it. I don't know if one person can save it. I'm worried about Aleister Black, who's rumored this week to maybe be on his way to the main roster as well. I love Aleister Black. I'm a massive fan of Aleister Black. No one looks or sounds like Aleister Black. No one can quite do what he does in the ring. He's got an aura. He's got a swagger. He doesn't ever need to cut a promo again. Ever. He can, but he doesn't need to. You look at that guy and you're like, God bless it. Look at this guy. He's a star. Right? Uh, That needs to be the right time. He can't save it on his own. I'm worried about what happens to him when he gets there. Uh, Lars versus Brock Russ man. Okay, so Corey brings up an interesting port. Lars, Lars Sullivan going to come to the main roster. What's he going to do? I, I, here's the problem. I think we might have talked about this at some point. Maybe last week, I'm thinking. Uh, 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 WWE's track record of taking the big man and giving him something cool to do is not so stellar. Okay? Tenzai, uh, uh, Brodus Clay, and, and I think last week we mentioned uh, the great Kali. You can laugh that if you want to. But Kali never should have been portrayed as a comedian or as a side and he was. Big Show at any given point. Braun Strowman, I was scared to death. He wasn't going to be anything. Uh, they did it to Mark Henry, on, to be fair. Because uh, they take the big man, they're like, God, he's big. Oh my God, he's so big. Let's just have him kill everyone. You guys in? All right. And then one guy says, I think now he should be stupid. Sounds good. Let's do it. And they make him stupid. And he's an idiot. And he's dancing like a clown. He's got a funny hat. And we're all going, oh, God, this is a train wreck. <laughs> Raw's a train wreck. That's what happens. So I'm a little worried for Lars Sullivan. When Mar Ranallo said he was a Jack Kirby illustration coming to life, I absolutely freaking believe that. That's that's If Jack, if the king were alive today, he would look at Lars Sullivan and say, my God, I've created a monster. It's the truth. Uh, again, who looks like Lars Sullivan? No one. He's unique. He's special. He's an attraction. He can be if they book him right. Bring back the hardcore championship, Seneca says. I'm ba- I'm half and half on that. I see the comedy in it. Chris says, I want to see Pentagon come to WWE. We were um we spoke about Pentagon here before on the show. Supposedly he and Phoenix are kind of locked down. They're not going anywhere right now. That's the rumor. Of course, Vince has enough money to buy, you know, to buy God at this point. Uh so he can do whatever he wants. But that was the story as of a few months ago, was that they're locked in. They really can't do anything right now. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I love Pentagon. Uh, think they need to disband the New Day. All right, so let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown was a much better show than Monday Night Raw, yes? That's not a huge compliment because this show was better than Monday Night Raw. Come at me. Because if you say I'm wrong, you're wrong. I'm just saying. And I don't have a billion-dollar budget either, man. It's just me with the shirt and the and the mic and the headphones. I got some thumbs up because I'm right. Because this was better than Monday Night Raw. SmackDown... Obviously, it was Baron Monday Night Raw. The beginning promo with Becky and Charlotte. And where, where Becky looked at Paige and called her baby girl. Shut up. That was good. That was, that was a nice touch. Because um, uh, I get tired of Paige's... I get tired of Paige. I, no disrespect. I just I get tired of the whole thing, uh, to be honest with you. But yeah, that spot alone, I tweeted out this was better than all three hours of Monday Night Raw. And I got a whole bunch of those. Because it's true. Uh, let's see. Remember this, the company that brought you the oddities, a sideshow collection of freaks. Robbie got a great point there. Miranda, thank you. Awesome. I was tooting my own horn. Miranda decided to toot it as well. Toot toot. That's what I say. Lars versus Keith Lee match was so amazing. And Corey was high on that match. It was a good match. I'm not going to lie. Two, uh, uh, two bulls. What was it? Jim Ross would say two bulls going at it in the ring. It's for, it's for sure. Smackdown Live felt like a major pay per view compared to Raw. Jim, preach, my friend. Bullet Club Invasion on WWE. Eh, eh, bleh. I don't know. Um, Because their success rate rate with Invasion Angles is not so good. 
I'm not saying it wouldn't work, man. I'm not saying you're wrong necessarily, but eh, I don't know how I feel about it. I'd love to see Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks come to the main show, but I got a feeling they destroy them if they come. They're like, Kenny, welcome. Welcome to the show, Kenny. Welcome aboard. Let's screw him. I don't know. Is Does that really happen? Everyone thought AJ would get screwed too, and it didn't happen. AJ's best. AJ was the best wrestler in the world before he got there. He's still the best wrestler in the world, arguably. I still, to this day, I'm sorry. I'm still sticking with Okada. That's just me. I love AJ. No disrespect, but I'm just saying. For me, it's like, eh, it's a one and two. Jen says, tired of the same matches. They have lots of talent. They aren't using what a waste of Raw is going to be. Raw is going to be in the crapper. Yeah, it is crapper. But Jen, to be fair, they've done the same match thing for years. They did it in the territory days. But you know what the difference was in the territory days versus now? Territory days didn't have the exposure. Didn't have national television. Had syndicated television. They had uh, they had local TV. They were in the high school gyms, armories and stuff. You saw it once a week. You didn't have a network you could stream all the time with internet that, that just gave you an, an onslaught of wrestling content like this every single day and now it's like oh my god this match again this sucks but yeah to your point but um the territory days had did the same thing you just didn't see it all the time so if you were in this town you didn't know that two nights ago those two guys wrestled three towns over you don't know that because there's no tv you didn't know see what i'm saying to you it's new and fresh and different that's one of the drawbacks if there's and there's a lot to be fair there's a lot there's one of the drawbacks of, of having all access to the mainstream media and to the streaming services as we have now entertainment at the click of a button what's the situation is on aj's contract there's some conflicting reports there lee uh in terms of what's happening with uh the phenomenal one rumors going around last week that maybe he was at the end that he was ready to hang it up that he was scaling back his dates all of these things may be true i don't want any of them to be true because while he's got a hall of fame career outside wwe he's still going on his hall of fame career inside wwe i'm not ready to to not see aj perform again for real uh, now, what does AJ the man want? How's his body feeling? Hasn't AJ worked everyone? Hasn't AJ worked everyone? Who's left that AJ's not worked? I'm not talking about retired legends, folks. He's worked everyone, right? He worked Seth. He worked Dean. He worked Roman. He worked John. He worked Brock. He worked Finn. Um, who am I missing? Nakamura, obviously. Daniel Bryan. Who, who am I missing? Who's he, who's he not worked? I'm just asking. To me, that's how you quantify whether or not and how you feel about what he what he does from here. He's worked everyone. Almas. Yeah, but Jolie, you're right. But I'm talking about top names. Top Hall of Fame names. Not that uh, Andrade won't be there at some point. Maybe he will. Uh, Small Joe. Yeah, Josh, you're right. Joe, you're right. Of course. He's worked everyone. He's worked everyone. I don't know of anyone that did. I can't. Uh, I'm talking about a top guy. A top guy. He's worked them all. Triple H. Okay. All right. Wrap it up. Triple H. How about that? You can't say Triple H is retired. Semi-retired, I guess you could call it. Uh, uh, Samoa, uh, AJ versus uh, Bobby. Has he worked? He's worked Bobby, hasn't he? Yeah. Pretty sure he has. Um, put him with a partner and give him a tag belt. That's interesting. Who do you put with AJ? Who would you put with AJ as a dominant? Ooh, AJ and Rey Mysterio. Tag team champions. Oh my God. Talk about a fun tag team to watch and best tag team on the roster. And that, and, and for that, for that opinion, for sure. That's just me. Jeff Hardy. Has an AJ work, Jeff? Brian, thank you. Jolie, thank you. Thank you guys for mentioning him. I thought it did. He didn't. Hasn't he worked, Jeff? At least one match. Am I crazy? Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. AJ deserves. You say AJ deserves a break, plain and simple. I'll I'll take that. Josh says we need Shawn Michaels versus AJ at Mania. We needed that maybe five years ago, Josh. I don't know if we need it in 2019. Hot take. Um, I love Shawn to death. I don't know if it's the good moment, right spot. He says he's not going to do this again. He said that eight years ago. He said it in eight years since then. I don't. What do I know? Maybe he will. Uh, would AJ love it? You better believe he would love it. Um, do I think the brand split should end? Miss Lopez asks. Uh, no. And, and I think that's a knee jerk reaction and a quick fix because you're looking at Raw going, God, Raw sucks. Raw sucks so bad. I'm mad about it. Uh, uh and you're right. Huh? <laughs> right. 
But And so the quick knee-jerk reaction is, screw it, let's just put the brands back together. But then what happens to all those titles? And then all of a sudden, guys that maybe weren't having a shot before at the top belts but have a shot now because there's two programs no longer have a shot anymore because Roman's going to be the top guy when he comes back. I mean, how do you fight that? Do you see what I'm saying? I think that's the good part about having the two brands. I wouldn't put them back together anytime soon. Uh, we do not need to see Michaels in the ring again. Paul, a lot of people agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Omni's mad about it. Yeah, me too. I did. Yeah, Deanna, thank you. I thought he had a match with Jeff. Has he? He's worked Orton too, right? Hasn't re- man. See, I, I'm getting fuzzy on this stuff. I watch a lot of wrestling. I'm just saying. Um, what else we got going on? Bray Wyatt needs to make a return to the main roster. Bray Wyatt came back at a house show last week, week before, right? Good to see him back. I don't know when he's going to be back on TV. People keep talking about the Wyatt family. I'm like, eh, meh, bleh. I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, 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 I'm against it. Mm, I don't know. But at the same time, uh, he's kind of been there, done that. What happens now? You see what I'm saying? What do you do next? I'm always thinking about what do you do next? What's in it for you now? What, where do you go from here? Do I want to see the same guys work each other 147 times in a row? Not necessarily, depending on who they are, right? But I want to see what's next. Jason asked if I have any updates on Roman. No, Roman was at a game recently. Georgia, right? Um, uh, no updates. Um, he looked okay. Doesn't mean anything, right? Doesn't mean anything bad either. Um, just means that he looked okay, I thought. Um, he's at home, or he's dealing with uh, uh, his issues. His physical well-being comes first. Um I, I'm anxious to see him back. I can't wait till he comes back. And uh, and you know what? I'm sure he doesn't care if he comes back and gets booted out of the building. Who cares? Uh, I'm sure this has all put put things a lot, a lot of things in perspective for, perspective for him. I hope it has for us too. Don't know if it has. Well, we'll see when he comes back, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you think if Ronda goes to SmackDown? Miss Lopez asks. I wrote that column this week. Um, apparently... And this is getting to the headlines. Thank you, Miss Lopez, for getting us back on track. Um, part of this show's title is that it be headlines of this episode. So here we go. One of the headlines that come out this week is that Fox, the Fox Network, wants Ronda on SmackDown Live. Hmm. Uh, go figure that they want a former MMA uh, UFC champion uh, to be the face of SmackDown. Um, I, I, I can't say I saw it coming. I'm not surprised, however. It makes total sense. They can do it. They've got enough right now to work with over the next 12 months, in my opinion. They're already talking about this could get uh, Becky and Ronda to WrestleMania 35. So why not talk about SmackDown in the fall of 2019? Why not? You know what I mean? I'm all for it. Brenda, hey, hey, what's up? Brenda's late. Everyone tell Brenda, shame on you for being late. Hmm. I, I, I'm kidding. Relax. Thanks, Brenda, for hanging out. Lance says, do they want Brock too? Lance is like, do they want Brock too? Because they can have him. Did you hear that? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. Uh, um, I know that Daniel Cormier, current UFC champion, uh, is going to go in for a tryout to be uh, on commentary. He had a tryout scheduled and had to reschedule it. But they want him. The Fox Network supposedly wants him on commentary. Man, the, the SmackDown could look like a totally different animal a year from now than what it looks like today. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. I think I'm all for it. Um, let's see. Brenda's got a snowstorm coming. Had to get grocery. Brenda, say, stay safe, please. Be careful out there. If you don't have to, what is the old saying? If you don't have to be out, don't be out. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you hanging out. It means a lot to me, for real. Uh, is Kurt Angle done as Raw GM, I assume? Um, I don't know what Kurt's doing. I assume he's still training. He's still getting in shape. I don't know. I think maybe we saw a little bit of what can happen when a man his age, whose body has been through the toll it's been in, tries to get back in a highly competitive match on a highly competitive event like Crown Jewel was. That's just me talking. And I don't wish any any ill will upon Kurt. I love Kurt. Uh, and I love that he looks like he does. I love that he's cleaned himself up and he is healthy. And he does look great physically. I, I, he's lost quite a few steps in the ring. Doesn't mean I want him to retire. I think Kurt's last match, in my opinion, should be against Brock. And I don't know if that's a great idea because Brock is in the business of um, you know, decimating people and eviscerating his opponents. Don't know if that's a great idea for Kurt. But ask Kurt what he thinks. I'm sure Kurt would be like, let's just do this. I just me talking. I think it would be uh 
I think it would be uh, uh, fitting if he ended his career that way. Let's see. Paige doing a great job on SmackDown. That's a, Well, you know, she, Paige's got some fans. I don't know that I'm one of them all the time. Again, I don't say anything personally. You guys know that about me, right? I don't make I don't I don't make offhanded pro you know what, Hogan sucks. I got my feelings on Hogan. But none of them are meant to be disrespectful. Again, I, I here's how I gauge it. What's the thing that, that your mom always told you? If you don't have anything nice to say about someone, don't say it. I don't know if I agree with that, because I say stuff about people sometimes that isn't very nice. However, I will say this. What am I comfortable writing or saying saying to you? Would I say it to the person if they walked in right now? If the answer is yes, I'm going to say it. If the answer is no, then maybe I'm not being professional enough. That's me talking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's kind of how I gauge it. You don't have to feel that way. That's just how I gauge it from my own personal response. Should Drew McIntyre turn face, Van Zyl asks, 155% absolutely. I love Drew. Drew's got it. Drew's got it. We've said that forever on this show. I stick to it. Drew could be the next... I'm not going to say face. People are obsessed with the word face. He's the next face of WWE. Who's the next face of the company when Roman went out? Get off that. We got to get off that. We talk about that stuff too much. You think John ever referred to himself as the face of WWE? I don't think so. If he did, we never heard it, right? Maybe. I don't know. Um, uh, To me, Drew could be the best baby face on Monday Night Raw. The top baby for sure. And that's high praise because Seth's there. You know what I mean? Uh, but I love me some Drew McIntyre. Uh, let's see. What other... Um, J- Jose says, hello, Jose. No way, Jose. Can the WWE have a new stable of heels? They got the Undisputed Era in NXT, but Undisputed Era are all four, four, four foot eleven. No disrespect. I'm, I'm teasing. I've often said put the Undisputed Era on the main roster, and I don't know how they're going to look. Not that WWE is so much land of giants like it always has been for like 50 years. Because, you know, things change, times change, and I'm glad they have. Otherwise, Daniel Bryan would never have been given a shot. And Daniel Bryan's exemplary in the ring. We all know this, okay? Hate him on him as much as you want to. I don't care. Uh, But WWE gives opportunities to smaller guys, and they should. Because the smaller guys, for the most part, a lot of them are very talented. They should be. uh, Should be given a chance. But, you know, put an undisputed air on Raw... Are they going to shrink next to everybody else? I don't know. And I'm not, again, I'm not making it personal. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to those guys at all because they put their time in, all three of them. They look tremendous. Oh, excuse me, all four of them. My apologies to Roderick Strong. They look great together. But, I mean, if that's what a faction is now, eh. To me, in my opinion, I, I love the classic four horsemen mall of a faction. You got the leader. He's boisterous. He's got swagger. You got the Tully guy who's also got some swagger, but he's like a little bit more ruthless, Right. You got the strong man, the big guy, that's Barry. Uh, and, and then you have the enforcer of the group, that one that does whatever it takes, and that's Arn. That, to me, is the classic model of a group. Evolution followed that exact pattern intentionally, right? To me, I, I got a soft spot in my heart for that. Uh, let's see. Do I feel WWE is desperate in need of a superstar shakeup? Absolutely. But I think they got to get guys healthy first. Or at least they got to get on the road to being healthy before they happen. I think that's coming soon. Undisputed Era took... Look more two or five than Raw or SmackDown. Joshua makes a great point. I can't argue that at all. And I'm not hating on that's and I don't listen, to be fair, I don't think that's Josh hating on the two or five live brand at all. Two or five live is worth your watch, and I don't think that's what he's saying. But he's saying sidewise size wise, and that makes sense, and I agree with him totally. Uh, Undisputed Air has taken on bigger guys saying it. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, Jim, I'm not saying they haven't. Uh and you know what? Maybe Jim's got a point as well. Maybe Jim's point is, hey, they've done it before, it'll be fine. Okay, uh, I won't fight that. Uh, you're not going to get an argument from me. I want them to be successful. See, that's that's the thing. That's what separates guys like Jim, myself, and I'm sure a lot of you from other fans out there. Uh, you want these guys to be successful. You want to see them uh, make money. You want to see them get theirs. Because the more people that are successful and the more pro wrestling companies around, the better the business is, the healthier the business is, right? Agree? Uh, and and the, the more chance the business will be around for our children and our children's children. That's kind of really important to me. It is. I can't help it. That's how I feel. You kind of know baseball is not going to go anywhere. Football and NBA is probably not going to go anywhere. There's always a possibility that pro wrestling could suddenly just in some form or fashion. I think the possibility is always there. For real. 
But I think the more companies that are successful, the more men and women that are successful, the more chance there is the companies are stay around. The business thrives. That's what I want. Jonah says they need to write more compelling storylines or else nobody will care about the lesser tier matches. The in-ring town is there. There are just no stakes due to lack of storytelling. Jonah gets the no prize. Jonah, congratulations, my friend. You win the Tom Clark's main event. No prize for this week for episode 113. Congratulations. Check your mail. It's on the way. Uh, excellent point, Jonah. People have to care. We've said about, about this on the program before. You have to feel a connection to the to the guys you're watching and the gals. You have to feel connected. If you don't, you don't care. You don't care. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to feel the connection. You have to really, really hate Baron Corbin to see him get his butt kicked. You have to really, really love Braun Strowman in order to see Braun Strowman kick Baron Corbin's butt. That's that's the deal. You have to feel a connection. When the fans don't feel it, no one cares. Excellent point. That's the heart and soul of the storyline in pro wrestling. Connection, feeling, emotion to make you tear up. I still tear up over the best storylines to this day. There are moments when I get emotional. I can't help it. Even whether it's the older matches I grew up watching as a kid or today. When it's done right, let me tell you something. When pro wrestling is done right, bring bring a grown man to tears. I know. I know this. And I feel it. You know, I, I, I was asked the other day, dude, how do you write eight days a week and do all this stuff? And how do you, where do you find the time and stuff? Because I still feel it. That's why I'm still a fan. Tom Rawl sucks. That'd be sucks, Tom. What are you doing? I'm still a fan. I'm Dude, I still feel this. That's why I'm still attached. I'm probably always going to be attached because I still feel it. It's important to me, you know? Joanne in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Hello, Joanne. Welcome to the show. Thanks for hanging out. Do you think... Uh, SmackDown going to Fox. WWE will throw all of its attention to SmackDown and forget about Raw. Sounds like WWE's forgot about Raw right now, William. What you think? I'm not dismissing you. I'm saying it kind of feels like that now, right? Um, <laughs> Paul says, unless you're crying like me when creative makes a terrible decision. Paul, kudos to you, my friend. That was good. Uh, so, are they going to put all their eggs in one basket with, with SmackDown? It's possible. Yeah. Well, yeah. But Raw should be the better show. Raw should be the show. Raw should be um, the number one pro wrestling show in the history of the world ever. Period. Bar none. Till the day you're dead and beyond, Raw should be the best pro wrestling show around. Period. It's the show that beat the competition. It's the show that shut down a billion dollar company run by a billion, owned by a billionaire for God's sake. McMahon wasn't a billionaire when that happened, right? He shut him down. He and a lot of other factors, I get it. But you think if WWE wasn't doing the, the doing things right, that WWE would have folded? No chance. Right? But they're the guys that put them out. That's a big statement. That's a big thing. That's no small task. Raw should be epic. Raw should be Infinity War every week. It's not even close. <laughs> Raw's, not, Raw's not Infinity War every week at all. Raw's barely Civil War. And it's never Civil War. What other Marvel thing can, can, I, can I compare it to? It's nothing. I mean, Raw's barely tug of war at this point. I was searching for a war thing. Are you with Are you with me? Do you see what I... I'll move on. Um, Chris says, I heard CM Punk is coming back. Chris, I heard that uh, uh, you could walk on water. Is it true? I tease Chris, no disrespect. Uh, I, I don't see Punk ever coming back. I think he said... Now, we've addressed this before, and I'll address it because I love me some Punk. Um, I just don't, I don't see it happening. And I'll, Chris, I'll say to you what you already know. They fired CM Punk on his wedding day via FedEx. That's all you need to know. I don't think you come back from that. You can come back from a lot of things. A talent can misbehave. A talent can drink himself into oblivion. A talent can, can shoot heroin and do crack and do crazy things and, and beat up his wife. I'm not saying these, any of these things are great. Don't misunderstand. A talent can do all kinds of stuff. A talent can utter the N word. And be put back on a major show at a major event in another country. And probably get a healthy payday from it too. A talent can do a lot of stuff. Okay? And be forgiven. Or at least mend fences and long enough to come back. But when you fire a man on his wedding day via FedEx, why would that talent ever want to come back? Haven't you conveniently just slapped him in the face? And his wife? And his fans? And his future? Nah. If I were a punk, I'd stay away from WWE. He seems happy. Let him stay away. Let him be happy doing something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim's, Jim's right. He said he'd listen. 
I'll put you this way, Jim. If he comes back, I'll be very disappointed. And I should want to see him. I don't want to see him come back. Uh, I support the guy as a person, not just as a pro wrestler, as a person. I just I put yourself in his shoes. What would you do? If the job that you worked in today, say you're off today, not like Mike delivering pizzas. Be careful, Mike. Say that uh, 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 that today you got a letter in FedEx. The guy knocked on your door, handed it to you, and they fired you. How would you feel? And then six months from now, they say, you know what? We'd love to have you back. Would you go back? I guess it all depends on where you're at financially. But have you moved on with your life? If you have, and even if you haven't, how do you go back to that? That's crazy. You know what I mean? I just don't know how he does it. Jim thinks, says he thinks he'd come back for all the wrong reasons. True. Um. Why is Corbin manager? He's horrible. Can't do a good promo. Corbin can't do much of anything. No disrespect. Uh, of course, he might take disrespect at that. I don't know. Okay. So, um, uh, Jolie says, my job made me work a busy Saturday night and fire me. Well, they suck, Jolie. They suck. Would you go back to them? Probably not. Just saying. Okay. So, uh, uh, Paul says that the riff was all Triple H. He's the Antichrist according to Punk. Listen, man, I know Punk was upset with Hunter. I get that. Punk was hurt. And I'm going to tell you something right now. When you're hurt physically, you get hurt emotionally. Uh, And it plays on your psyche. Um, uh, In my job, apart from the wrestling stuff, uh, several months. Actually, it's been over a year now. uh, But it feels like several months ago. Um, We had some crazy stuff happen at work. I was without help. I went 26 days without a day off. I got one day off. Then I, I went another 17 days without a day off. This wasn't eight-hour days. This was nine to ten-hour days, maybe more every single day. Uh, and I wasn't getting dropped on my head like Punk was, to be fair. The guy went through much more pain and, and agony than I ever did. Okay, But up here, I was shot. I was shot. I would forget where... This is no joke. No joke. I would forget where I was. I would forget conversations. I would lose blocks of time, which is really weird to say. You'd think I, I had a concussion or something. I was so exhausted, I, I didn't even know what time it was. I couldn't remember. Uh, someone say, tell me uh, tomorrow's Friday. I'm like, what? Like, I, I legit had no idea what the day was. And it, it played on me psychologically. I became uh, paranoid. I thought people were out to get me. This is true. Uh, I thought it was me against the world. I didn't have any friends. My family wasn't there. It was crazy. So I can't imagine, add all that to getting dropped on your head eight days a week and tell me where your head's at when all that happens. You're going to feel like the whole world's out to get you. I'm not saying he made it up or he, he imagined all this. And I'm sure that, that Hunter had his hand in a lot of it because he didn't like punk. We all knew that going in, didn't we? He knew it too, right? But you got to put yourself in Punk's shoes then and now and see where you think you would be if you were in his position. Uh, Richard says, I think WWE need to change because I'm tired of seeing the same wrestlers wrestle the same. Man, Richard, you echo the sentiments of a lot of people on here. Is Undertaker going to have more matches this year? Joseph, I hope Undertaker's done. And I say that with as much respect for professional wrestlers as I can possibly have. I just want it to be done. I need it to be over. Um, that's me. And I, and I say that because it's just the time the time has come and gone. It's over. Just let it go. You don't need to do this anymore. And I know you still love the business, but you don't need to. It's fine. People are never going to turn on you. They're never going to turn on you. I don't think anyone's ever going to turn on Undertaker. But they are going to get tired of seeing him. When they know he can't do what he did before. And it's not his fault. People get older. But I think the time has come and gone. Just let it go. We all are sitting here talking about how weak the roster is. We want to reinforce it with with aged out veterans? Is that what we want? Or do we want to see the talent that they have get pushed the way they should? I'm just saying. I don't know. Keith, thanks for hanging out, brother. Come back next week, man. What happened to Zack Ryder? Billion dollar question, my friend. Been asking that question for 10 years. To be fair, he still got a job. Didn't think that was going to happen, did you? He's like the Brooklyn Brawler. He's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, what other headlines are going on? Last night, I'm working on uh, ProWrestling.com. I got I hammered out like six pieces last night, current events and stuff. And at the end of the night, I'm half asleep. It's like pushing 11 o'clock and I'm doing this, trying to stay awake. I see JBL taking shots at Cody Rhodes on Twitter. And I'm like, what? What? So I backtrack and try to look for some history. There's no history. JBL is just taking shots at Cody Rhodes on Twitter for no apparent reason. Now, I've not been on in the past hour or so. So maybe this is blown over. Maybe JBL got hacked. We can look right now to be sure. Uh, We'll see what happens here. Come on, baby. 
This moment of silence brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. <laughs> um, someone help me out here. I'm trying to find John's Twitter. Oh, this is killing me. Just do the search, Tom. Get it over with. There it is. Let's see if John Layfield said anything today. Um... I don't see anything today. Oh, wait. No, I do. Hold on. I go way back with Dusty. Tag with Murdoch, Dusty's old partner. I didn't mean to disrespect Dusty. It's what happens when Elise from the Cowboys win my birthday, talking smack, and booze mix. So uh, he admits that he was uh, hitting the sauce last night, folks. Um, Yeah, I was having fun with Cody last night and said I killed Cody Rhodes. I obviously didn't mean that literally. It was a very poor choice of words. I go way back with him and his family, and I just was talking smack in a pro wrestling sense. I apologize for that poor choice of words. Kudos to John Layfield for being a man. Not because he got called out, because he didn't have to say anything to you or me or anyone else. Kudos to John for being a man and coming out and saying what he said on Twitter. For real. Um, props to him. You can't hate on the guy and then hate him because he apologizes. Don't do that. You're better than that. I believe you are. I am. So, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I wrote for JBL years ago. JBL had a blog called The Layfield Report, uh, and I wrote for him for a couple of years. The couple of years it was on, I was one of his first writers, maybe the second guy he brought on. I loved it. Talked to him a couple of times. Great guy, nice guy, very professional. Loved my stuff, knew who I was, which was very cool to me. Uh, and I loved that gig. Uh, his only request was that we didn't slam the company. He's like, I still work here. I don't care if you're critical be professional. And I'm like, oh, I can do that all day long. You know what I mean? It's kind of what I do. And it was a blast writing for him. I enjoyed it. And he still owes me 500 bucks. That's the truth. I'm going to take that to my grave. John Layfield still owes me 500 bucks because he would have like contests of whoever could get the most hits in a month. And I won a couple of times. And the last time I won, he shut the website down. I never got paid. So uh, I take that to my grave. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, is it time for a new general manager for Raw and SmackDown? I submit that it is. Major League Wrestling, have you heard of it? Yes, Major League Wrestling is run by... Is it Court Bauer? Is that right? Um, uh, David? Because they, they got the, the uh, copyright on War Games. Two separate words on the War Games match. Uh, they managed to get that before WWE could like copyright it, I think is how the story went. So WWE still uses it, except they put the words together. I hear MLW runs great shows. I, 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 that's what I hear. I've not seen any of them. I've seen tidbits online, right? Hey, listen, I'm telling you right now, like I said earlier, the more successful pro wrestling companies there are in the business, the happier I am. The more I get to write about, the more I get to watch, and the better chances there are the company continues, or that the business continues past this point. I'm all for it. In your opinion, what, what one thing does WWE need to change to bring the product quality up to scratch? Just, just better, uh, just better storylines, man. That's what Stephen says. Stephen Hall, what's up? Uh, uh, just, uh, just better storylines. Just something I can relate to. Um, uh, the babyface has got to win. Babyface got to win. There's an old adage in the business. I learned this when I got into the business myself. Uh, the heel never wins. The baby never loses. Do you see what I'm saying? And that applies to everything. In other words, a heel can win tonight. He can't win in the long run. The baby can lose tonight. He can't lose in the long run. It can't happen. There's ups and downs. There's seesaw. There's hills and valleys. Yes, it's a dance movie. Watch this. There's hills and valleys. I get that. Peaks and lows. I get all that. The heel never wins. The baby never loses. They can't because you kill the story. Kind of the way they've killed it on Raw now. The heel wins every single freaking week. You can't do that and keep the... You can. You won't keep the audience. And you can tell because the audience is tuning out to Raw in record numbers. Click, 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 click. That should tell them something. Does it? I don't know. <laughs> Good question. Uh, let's see. Going in a couple of weeks, Conan. Let's see. Uh, Conan runs it, I heard. Conan runs MLW as David. Is that what you heard? David's going to go to MLW. David, uh, when you go, the next time that we're here live on the air, tell us how it went, man. Uh, Corey, Tom, did you say a tweet that Matt Hardy said he would make a one? Yeah. Uh, Matt's tweeting stuff about being raw GM. I don't know how much of it is true. Uh, he's probably just having fun, but uh, that'd be interesting. Can you imagine the stuff he would come out? 
and say the kind of matches he would book. And the, the talents are going, what do I have to do? Oh my God, that'd be epic. Talk about bringing the entertainment factor from here. You can't see how low it is. It's in the crapper and shooting it sky high. I love me some Matt Hardy. I'm not going to lie. I do. God, such a good gimmick. One of the all-time best gimmicks that the business has ever seen. I, dude, I'll stick to that until I'm dead. I'm sorry. One of the best gimmicks of all time in the history of pro wrestling is the broken slash woken. I'm sorry. It is. That's just how I feel. Simple storytelling. NST does it better, but main roster does not. Yeah, it's the same company, Jim. Yeah, Jim says that. Absolutely, Jim. We need Freddie Prince Jr. back. Hey, Steven, to your point, I don't know if you're ribbing or not, man, but uh, Freddie Prince was a smart guy, and he was a fan before he ever got into acting, is what I read or heard, right? Uh, they loved him, and I thought he did a great uh, to all By all accounts, Freddie Prince Jr. did a top-notch job as a writer in WWE, to your point. Um, yeah, dude, if you, listen, if you insist on bringing in outsiders, that company does all the time, if you insist on doing that, here's an idea. Be sure they're fans. Be sure they understand the product and they understand what the business is kind of about before you bring them in. Makes sense to me. Are we going to see TNA trying to come up to WWE like ECW uh, and WCW? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. TNA's had opportunities before. They, t- they took a run at WWE on Monday nights. It didn't work. They had Hogan. They had all these guys. It didn't work. No one cared. Um, I want Impact Wrestling. I wish them nothing but success. Um, as I do every pro wrestling company out there that's doing it right. Okay. Um, but no, I don't see them being a legitimate competition. I think the only way you would ever see legitimate competition is if it's from Ring of Honor, New Japan as a, as a union, not a union, but as a, as a group together. And if Impact wanted to join in as a third brand, but here's the question there, who wins the matches? Who's the top guy? Who's the bookers? Who, who's the booker? Who's the guy that everyone answers to? Part of the reasons WWE has been successful all these years and existed and outlasted the competition and everybody else involved, one guy, one guy calls the shots. You could talk about Triple H and stuff, right? But one guy, and it's Vince. There's one boss. In WCW, there's like 20 bosses backstage. No one was talking to anyone. Everyone had input. Everyone was telling everyone what to do. The whole thing fell apart. You can't run a group like that. You can't run a business like that. It's got to be one boss, and that's it. He can have guys under him, but it's one boss that the boys answer to. That's important, and that's why WWE outlasts everybody else. Why they still will? I don't. I can't say still will. I want these other companies to exist, but I'm saying at the end of the day, unless there's one guy running the show, it's not going to operate in the same fashion. Uh, Mark says, "I know the Cena uh, haters will hate not like this, but Cena needs to come back. If Cena comes back, he could be the GM." Uh, Cena's not going to work anymore, Mark. Uh, and uh, kudos for giving the guy respect. He deserves it. He's earned it. Uh, at the same time, he doesn't want to do it anymore. His body can't take it. He, he says he's done. He wants to be able to walk in 10 years. And he doesn't want to feel bad. Uh, he wants his body. To, he doesn't want to put his body through it, through the grind. I have to respect that. He put his body through the grind for a long time. Uh, and he doesn't want to do it anymore. He should be able to move on. And I think he has. And I good for him. What do you personally think about Cody the Bucks potential new wrestling promotion? Again, Steven, I want every promotion that's got their head on straight, got good intentions. I want them to make it. I want it to be successful. They're not going to compete with WWE. And if you could talk to Cody Rhodes right now, I'm sure he'd tell you, we're not in the business of competing with anybody. We just want to deliver the best product we possibly can. We want to deliver the best matches we can. It's up to everyone else to call us the best in the world, not up to us. That's that. That's exactly how I would go about it, and I'm sure that's how they're going about it. I hope the company is successful. I hope it gets off the ground. I hope they make a billion dollars. And everybody involved gets paid handsomely. That's what I hope. And I hope it's fun to watch. Do I see guys like uh, Jordan Devitt and Zach Gibson make it? Jordan Devlin? Is that what you're talking about? I love Jordan Devlin. Uh, uh, make it in the long run in terms of what, Cody? Are we talking about in terms of main roster success? Sure. I would love to see him. Uh, if you're talking about WWE Champion, it's probably not going to happen. But you know what? Never say never. Who who envisioned Daniel Bryan becoming WWE champion? Remember when he first got there and he was the they were calling him a nerd and stuff, and he's he's such an idiot. Look at him, he's a nerd. He didn't have TV, huh? <laughs> and that's all I could talk about. Who pictured that guy WWE champion? Be honest. Unless you were a diehard Bryan Danielson fan, who even thought that? Anything could happen. Seem to be burying Finn Balor on Raw. Everyone's thinking that, Gavin, for sure. Uh being wasted. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. I can't say bearing. Listen, Gavin, and listen, I'm not, uh, here's Tom on the soapbox again, God's sake, but listen, 
When it comes to the word bearing, I have a problem with that. If you are on TV, if they're selling your merch, if you're working the live events, if you're on the network, if you're on the YouTube shows, if you're you're not getting buried. Now, I know the argument can be made for they're burying them in plain sight, Tom. God, dissect it, why don't you? Split hairs a little bit, huh? I get where you're coming from, where everyone else is coming from. They use the word bury. It's the popular word to use. I just, I'm not feeling that word anymore. I don't, I'm not feeling it. You know what buried is? Not being on TV. You can't find their merch. They never talk about them. They don't reference them on TV. That's buried. How many talents are really getting affected that way? I don't think Finn Balor is buried at all. Um, at all. Do I think he's capable of more than a given him? Absolutely. 100%. Totally. For sure. Um, okay, so I'm here now. I just got back from Social Security office. Put your ride. Drive forever. Oh, I see. Jason's just now coming on board. And Jason, we're going to take it home, man. <laughs> we have been going for an hour here, and I'm kind of out of breath. I was all fired up today. Staying as GM. God, I love Sting. Um, yeah, uh, hmm, yeah, hmm. would Sting go along with it, with the road schedule? Sting would have to be on the road. Not all the time, not every week maybe, but at least two out of the four weeks he'd have to be on the road. Otherwise they'd have like, uh, tape vignettes from, uh, uh, from backstage, pre-tape stuff. I'd be okay with him. I love Sting. Sting could do anything. I think I'd love it. What's the latest on Jericho Ross promoting? Uh, supposedly Jericho and Ross uh, would only be used as talents. This is actually Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks promotion. Does that be cut ties with Jericho completely if it comes to fruition? Well, again, Jericho would just be a talent working the shows. So, no, I don't think that would be cut ties. It would be crazy to cut ties with him. The guy's in demand. Joker Sting. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but I get you. Roman is GM. Here's my thing about that, William. I think Roman needs to focus on him and his family and his health. If he wants to come back, uh, good on him. But I, is it necessary? Not ne- not necessarily is it necessary. You know what I mean? Uh, I, th- I think it should. And I don't know, would it do him more harm than good to just come back and just stand around and not act, be active anymore? Only he can answer those questions. I can't answer it for you. Hulk is GM. And all God's people said, no. Sorry, Philip. I'm not a fan of that. Brother, 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 brother. That's just me. Um. All right, man. We're getting ready to, to wrap this thing up. Anytime the viewership drops to a certain number, I'm like, people are done watching. Um, is there any other quick headlines that everyone wants to hit before we call a day here on the show? Let me do this. Um, let's see what's going on uh, that maybe we can discuss at the moment. Let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's see. Um John Cena, speaking of John Cena, won the Muhammad Ali Legacy Award from Sports Illustrated. Do you know Colin Kaepernick was the guy that won it last year? Interesting little tidbit there for you. So that's one of the headlines making the rounds today. So, yeah. Again, good on John. If a guy's earned it, if a guy's worked hard enough to get something, that's that's definitely John for sure. So, yeah, good on him. Um, anything else coming back? Punk is never coming back. Punk is GM would be must-see TV. Yeah, he's never coming back. But, Jonah, you're right. That would be amazing to, to do. Corbin should be fired. Talk about that. Okay, KC. Are you talking about firing him in storyline? Is that what you're talking about? Like from his position in storyline. Is that what you mean? I assume it is. I did see Jake the Snake on Joe Rogan's podcast. I saw tidbits of it. It was some weird stuff he was talking about. And he 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 used the word, uh, he used the F word. Not that F word, the other F word. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? And I kind of felt like, oh, that's kind of out of place. But... It's Jake, man. If you don't want Jake unfiltered, don't have Jake on your show because Jake's unfiltered. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Tina says the trial would kill Roman. His immune system is shot due to treatments. He'd catch everything. Good point. I don't know if we know what his immune system is like right now. I'm sure it's not good, uh, to your point, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, great, great point. Liam says, oh, Liam, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Liam, we've talked about ICD before, haven't we? Yeah. Yes, Casey talking about getting fired. Oh, Casey, I'm all... Yeah, I I don't think he'll last. And what about the idea of putting Lisa Bliss in his spot? And see, the point of, listen, I'm the authority figure. I'm the person in charge, and I'm going to do th- things the right way. Let's attack that guy five-on-one and kill him. Come on. 
It, you know, WWE, and we said this before at the beginning of the show, you're insulting the fans' intelligence with this corporate Hill Authority figure stuff. It's That company is hell-bent on doing that, and you don't need to do it. But, buddy, they really think you do, right? I just, I don't see it. I don't understand the fascination with it. You can't recreate Mr. McMahon versus Stone Cold. No matter how many times you try, they got close with a couple different guys. You can never fully recreate it. So just leave it alone, man. They can't. They won't. I don't get it. It's crazy. Bliss is way overrated. A lot of people feel that way. No to Alexa Bliss. Yes, fire his GM. Make him be a wrestler. Uh, do we want Baron wrestling all the time? Listen. The guy's got heart for the business. He's got the will to do it. He's got the ability to do it. Have I ever been blown away by a Baron Corbin match? No, sir, I haven't. Does that mean I can't be? No, sir, it doesn't. Uh, maybe I will be. And I want him to get better. If he's going to be on my TV every week, I want him to be entertained. I want him to do as much as possible, and I want to be entertained by him. I'm not making that up. I'd like to see him get better. I, I don't know what that means, though. Does that mean taking him out of the corporate role that I'm sick of seeing already? Does that mean putting him back in the ring full time? Sorry, I got Tanahashi no caught on my TV right now. Oh, it's hard to talk about Raw when you're watching some of the best in the world ply their craft in New Japan. I don't. I'm not hate to be one of those guys, but I'm just. I'm going to be one of those guys. Uh, fear and loathing. Yeah, yeah, Liam. Okay, cool, Liam. Thanks, man. Yeah, let me know how it goes. That sounds good. All right, uh, I think we're at the end, my friends. Uh, this has been a blast. I I talked a whole bunch. My throat sore. Um, my heart rate got shot up there for a while, but it was fun. Listen, last week's show, I didn't get posted to iTunes till today because I suck because it was Thanksgiving week and I was booked up and I had a lot of stuff to do. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. The Santa hat's going to be coming out within the next week or two because I'm jolly. I'm nothing if not jolly. Okay. Just so you know, so everyone's aware. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hey, Brenda, thank you for watching. Everyone, again, if any of you are still around that were saying, hey, I'm a first-time viewer, all right. And if we're not friends, send me a message on the Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger. Tell me, hey, Tom, it's me, and I'll send you a friend request. There you go. Okay, I think this is all I got for you. Real quick, I'm going to tell you um, uh, where you can find me. ProWrestling.com. Wrestling Rumors, as always. Thank you guys for the platform. We appreciate it for the show here. Um, the Floor Seat which is of the Sports Daily, and the thechairshot.com. That's the four places you can find me. Um, I'm there pretty much every day of the week. Come check out my stuff. You can always go to Boink Studios, B-O-I-N-K, boinkstudios.com. I try to, to update the site as often as possible with links to my latest columns and whatnot. Um, this is my main show. I've got three other podcasts. Please check them out. The links are on boinkstudios.com again. Please check it out. I'm trying to think of anything else I missed. Uh, Kathy, what's up? Kathy is uh, is late to the show. Kathy, go back and watch this, would you? Make me feel better. Gavin, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hey, Jim, thanks for hanging out, brother. I appreciate it. Gail, what's up, Gail? Hey, listen, everyone's saying, hey, it's me. Send me the comments in Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger. Would you do that for me, all of you? Everyone trying to get a friend request, please do that. It's it's murder trying to get back through these comments after the show's over and try to find who, who talked to me. Trust me. Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger. Say, hey, it's me. I will send you a friend request. I promise you. My hand to God. Okay? John, thanks, man. Appreciate you hanging out. Thank, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It continues to mean the world to me that you guys hang out. I appreciate your business. I appreciate you uh, talking to me. It's really cool. I'm having a blast doing this. Um, as long as Wrestling Rumors will have me, I will continue doing the show here. Uh, I'm just having the best time doing this. Thanks for hanging out with me, man. It's it's uh, means a lot. I love talking to smart fans. I love talking to people about wrestling. That's what we're doing. So uh, it's a blast. I hope you guys are having fun. Thanks again for hanging out. That's all I got. We will see you next time on Tom Clark's main event. <laughs>